So I recently read about Sue and the Seed of Sumeru manga from Honkai Impact. And it made me think that maybe the lesser lord Kusanali could be more interesting than I thought. Even my previous video would quite easily be debunked with how close the relation of this person has to Sumeru. Both their near perfect description regarding design as well as the relation to Genshin and Sumeru's name. And they could also cover the age and gender of said Archon in the most convenient way possible. Timestamps are below for anyone who wants to pick out a key moment or stay in this video to stay with the flow of every detail that I mentioned. Hey guys, what's up? Arun, and welcome to another theory video. This time about Sue and the Seed of Sumeru. Okay, starting off in a weird way, the Dendro Archon could possibly be a gender bent version of a young man named Sue. If you know about gender bent characters and who Sue is, you can skip to this timestamp right here. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, you're probably wondering, well, Aru, why would Mihoyo make a gender bent of a person in Genshin, who would possibly be a gender bent character of someone else? Now, we already know that Genshin takes some of its characters from Honkai Impact, and the hype slash anticipation for said characters is clear enough to make a great marketing plan. And the gender bending, I'd say, is a good way for creativity and variety of story, as well as keeping the characters from being too uncanny to their previous game. If you're wondering who or what characters could be gender bent from Honkai, the perfect example would be Venti, the Animo Archon. His design and name was taken from Wendy, the Hersher of Wind, which surprise surprise, Venti is a near perfect copy of Wendy in almost all regards, except for one thing, he has a PP. The next character is Zhong Li who seems to be taken from Fuhua but was quickly disclosed because of the recent Moon Chase event showing visual representation of Fuhua's design as one of the Adepti and that his design was taken instead from Adam from Honkai Odyssey. Having said that, Venti himself confirms that there is a possibility for gender bent archons that come from Honkai. And I'm pretty sure that it would be the same with Su and his journey before turning into the lesser lord Kusanali. Now that we're done with gender bending, let's talk more about Su. I'll be using more layman's terms to keep this video short and as easy to understand as possible. Su was a fusion warrior and member of an organization called Fire Moth, which were survivors of a previous era frozen in time until the next cycle of humanity. The fusion warriors, similar to Su, are one of the creations of Fire Moth called Project Mantis. Mantis, meaning massively augmented Neo Tech Integrated Soldiers which is a genetically enhanced human whose genes are combined with monsters from Honkai. Fusion warriors and mantises also possess what's called divine keys that give them immense power depending on which key they have. The divine keys are made with hershers of the Honkai which are basically Honkai lords or Honkai rulers. If you're wondering how many keys there are, there are way too many for me to mention. So far, there's 12 and each of them can take on multiple forms and names so we'll stick to the key that Su has which we can simply call the second key. Moving on, the second key allows Su to make bubble universes which we can call alternate universe that only he can traverse through, tamper with, and change however he wants to. He can bring other people with him if he so pleases but entering or escaping them is virtually impossible. And a specific bubble universe he created is called the Seed of Sumeru. Can you guess where this is going? The bubble universe, Seed of Sumeru, is characterized with rainforests and an open patch with a huge tree right in the middle where Su usually hangs out. Su is also able to look into multiple other bubble universes and tell what can and will happen within those universes. Think of Doctor Strange reading multiple realities but he's an anime character. So with his abilities and powers done, we can move on to Su himself. <laughs> Su himself. Su and his personality takes on a very smart and cautious, calculative, and very logical person. He reads into every possible outcome and chooses the best one. And the second key's power to look into bubble universes lets him take full advantage of that. When he's met with certain individuals that he finds interesting, he puts them through a series of trials. Trials that involve the person making crucial choices that could change the course of a single bubble universe. 
He's also very considerate of mortals and would much prefer that he doesn't hurt anyone. With all these abilities and powers, as well as his standing as a mantis, his main goal now in the current timeline is to find a solution to stop the next apocalypse and avoid the same end that their previous world experienced. So the story goes that Sue, after watching over so many alternate universes and finding out how to save humanity, he concludes that humanity itself is who must find the solution and not him. So he gives up his 4,500,000 years of studying the countless worlds and universes in his search for a solution. He fast forwards the speed of the process and gives the second key as well as the seed of Sumeru at the cost of his own life force and then condenses it into a leaf. He then gives this leaf to an individual named Bianca along with the essence of his bubble world, the seed of Sumeru. TLDR, Bianca is someone who he finds worthy of receiving his key and the seed of Sumeru after passing his multiple trials. He then basically dies along with his bubble universe that doesn't have the essence of the seed of Sumeru and the second key's power to keep it from being destroyed. At the end of the manga, he is greeted by a disembodied voice in what can only be described as an empty space with stars and planets around it. The disembodied voice then applauds him for being such an enlightened individual and is now asked to play a game where he chooses between what looks like three squished marbles. The disembodied voice also mentioned that Sue is looking for universal truths that govern even the Honkai itself. The manga ends before Sue makes a choice or even says a word. So that's all you need to know about the second key, the seed of Sumeru, and our boy Sue. Now whether or not the marbles are worlds or bubble universes, I can't say just yet because of how vague the final chapter is and the fact that there is little to no context to form a tangible answer. So from here on, we'll be going over theory instead of facts. Sue is a very insightful person and has transcended his will as a human. The Dendro Archon is also known as the God of Wisdom. Dainsleep mentions and I quote, The God of Wisdom's enemy is wisdom itself, and the oasis of knowledge is a mirage in the desert of ignorance. In the manga, Sue is very particular when searching for answers to saving humanity. He doesn't want any radical decisions that are morally ambiguous and would much prefer not to hurt humans if possible. But he could be placed at an impasse to further his search if he retains his memory, that being to allow push for folly and uninhibited erudition. The Dendro Archon is the youngest being 500 years old and Sue, at the end of the manga, is basically forced to make a choice between what we can theorize as alternate universes. He could quite literally be isekai to Sumeru as Kusanali. Next, the lesser lord Kusanali, if translated to Chinese, means lucky little grass king. Su has a liking for nature and makes most of his actions in the form of leaves and trees. As for grass, we can make an assumption that it's a namesake rather than an actual power. If it was a power, then it would be more inclined to grass than leaves, branches, and vines. As for his abilities regarding grass, I'd leave it up to you to wonder and theorize as well as think about. Finally, the seed of Sumeru and Sumeru itself have similar names and characteristics. Sumeru is a place with both deserts and rainforests. The seed of Sumeru is characterized by rainforests, with the main feature being a huge tree in the middle, as well as the name itself, Seed of Sumeru. Now that I've mentioned every relation to the Dendro Archon I could, I can now start denying my own claims, albeit nitpicking at most but is still worth going over. Sue is a fusion warrior which makes him one of the mantises. Along with his lowered aging and being frozen in time, he lived for longer than 50,000 years. In contrast, Zhongli is only 6,000 years old. Now if he does retain his memory, which I doubt he would, but in the slim chance that he does, then the problem within Sumeru's scholarly ravings and madness is easily answered by Su and his search for truths and to solve the problem regarding the Honkai, which is a new plotline that is basically unrelated to the rules of Teyvat or even what Teyvat knows and is completely unrelated to Genshin Impact as a whole. But it does make him a great antagonist to disagree with when we get to Sumeru. 
much like in our previous interaction with Raiden A. If not, he could have gotten amnesia, obviously, after his isekai, which I have my reasons that I don't want to, but it's just me not wanting him to lose his memory. But the situation around Sumero is too uncontrollable that even an Archon who's 500 years old of experience is apparently still not taking action against. Which really bugs me because if the Archon herself is against such action, she would have made personal announcements or personal action to address such a counterintuitive problem within his own region. I mean, no other being would be able to go against a literal Archon. Granted, if Sue does get his memory wipe, being an Archon will be a hard task even if you already have 500 years under your belt. If you look into the description of the Dendro Archon, way back in the quest Solitary Fragrance, it mentions that the Dendro Archon was male, but this was due to a translation error. The original statement did not mention any pronouns about the Dendro Archon's gender. In actuality, Kusanali was made to be a female all along. So gender bending Sue into a female would be very interesting, and if he did retain his memory, it'd be even more interesting knowing his story. But gender bending a character could get some backlash than just taking his full-on original visual design. We've seen the huge jump in sales from Raiden because of being a character from the previous game Honkai Impact, but this could be because she was the first female adult model that was an Archon. And turning Sue into a girl while maintaining his visual design could spark some controversy and some slight uproar in the future. In summary, Sue is quite possibly the best in terms of contextual relation. I mean, he owns the seed of Sumeru, and it wouldn't be a surprise if he was in Sumeru even though he's not an Archon. His visual relation also fits in that he has a liking toward nature. Heck, his bubble universe has a huge tree and is characterized by rainforests, which Sumeru also has. And his powers are pretty much tree leaves and they're all about Dendro. His backstory before entering Teyvat also holds theoretical credibility, especially if the authors purposefully left out the end of this manga to be such a cliffhanger. As well as being a good compromise for why Kusanali is the youngest of the Archons. It could also be a possible plot twist if he was to retain his memory, and would answer the crisis and raving scholars in Sumeru. So everything fits in quite well, especially the word Su and the word Sumeru. But, and this is a huge but, he is a dude. And you'd be surprised how much people would debunk a theory just because of their gender. But I've said what I could say, and Su being isekai into Genshin Impact sounds like a really good theory. Especially since the names and relations match up near perfectly, and the possibility of his memory being retained also makes a good answer for Sumeru's problems. But everything else after what I discussed is going to be up to you to decide. And there it is, my theory on why Su could be the Dendro Archon, Kusanali, as well as the Seed of Sumeru. If you have something to add, or if I missed something, or if I'm completely wrong, you can comment down below and maybe we can discuss it there. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel, and to help the YouTube algorithm get more eyes and views and subs on it as well. You can also click the bell icon to stay up to date on the content that I post every few or so days. I'm trying to make videos that aren't theories so I can have some fun with my channel. So if you could take some time and watch my more meme and relaxed videos, I'd appreciate it very much. Obviously, I'm not forcing you, but I'd be glad if you could watch some of my other videos. That's gonna be it for this theory. Be sure to wait for my next video. I'll see you guys later. Bye!